later, Dr Tracy and Paula are in trouble as poachers visit their camp. Can Clarence the cross-eyed lion come to the rescue on Daktari at nine? But first, the Thamesmen. Ta-da! George! How you doing? Good, thank you very much. How are you? I'm very well. I'm George in Southern California. I am Alex. I'm in Northern California, but you can tell from our accents we're really from Texas. No, we're actually <laughs> from the Thames Valley, aren't we? That's why we're the Thames man, with a little nod and a wink to other things. Yeah, to go and look out, go and check where the Thames Valley is. It's absolutely bloody idyllic where we came from, but we've fled that country because of the weather. Now we come here, and now global warming, England is unbelievable. In Seagird, Britain, the population looks naturally enough to the shores for its annual relaxation, defying war or weather. Blackpool on Lancashire's windswept coast is a shining example of what every British seaside resort ought to be. For almost a century, Britons have frozen happily on its sands and coped with the same old maddening problems. It's a great place for the bare necessities. Yeah, it's, it's got it's got it's hotter than Los Angeles. Is it? My times, yeah, yeah. I, I... <laughs> I bet there, those little pasty gits are peeling. Oh, yeah, right, exactly. And, uh, everything's uh, anyway. I'm sure it anyway, makes... Welcome, welcome to Cohen Week. Uh, we're in the middle of Cohen Week. We we do odds and sods, and then we we take curated tracks from subscribers like you. So if you've got a week you want to put forward, um, you know, send us emails down there. This one was sent in by Brian Roy, and he sent in his Cohen Week, and uh, we picked it up immediately because I love a bit of Cohen. I know nothing about Cohen, and but I'm learning rapidly and loving it so far. And so this is really, really interesting. This is a proper proper poetic singer songwriter with a great story and uh has it changed quite... your mind a bit about cohen or whatever or is it still very slow for you or um... no not at all i i mean i think my, i didn't know him at all i just you know just knew he's a sort of singer songwriter maybe not my thing you know whatever it happens to be but that was an impression form when i was like heavy bloody metal you know yeah. Uh, and, and then I just never had a chance to revisit it or, or, you know, it's not like it's played on the radio locally or something like that. So, you know, it just never crossed my path. And so I think it's great to be able to find this because obviously I've heard of his reputation. I've heard, you know, who he is, but I just never had a chance to listen. Um, so it's great. Well, this track is Hallelujah. Well, we all know it. We We know it because of Jeff Buckley. You might want to hang around till afterwards. Mm, but well, um... You're not saying there might be a bonus track. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. Dun. Uh, we'll have to see but this one this is Leonard Cohen so Alleluia was a uh, song written I'm going to read the notes read the notes do that yeah thank you thank you for the notes perfect thank you yeah thank you Brian uh, Alleluia was a song written by Canadian singer Leonard Cohen originally re released on the various uh, positions album in 1984 the thing was right I, we were just talking about this this uh, this song came out no one bloody noticed it mm. um, achieving a little success the song found greater popularity acclaim through the recording by John Cale uh, which inspired a recording by Jeff Buckley so how, can you imagine writing this song and it just not doing anything? Oh, well, I haven't and heard it, the song yet, so we'll have to see. Well, the bloody lyrics. Right, so Cohen is reputed to have written uh, as many as 80 to 180 uh, draft verses for Alleluia. Wow. Cohen is uh, to acclaimed uh, to 150 draft verses and it claims substantiated by his notebooks containing manifold revisions and additions and contemporary interviews um what's that yep and contemporary interviews in a writing recession uh, session in new york's uh, royalston hotel cohen is famously said to be reduced to sitting on a floor in his underwear filling notebooks and banging his head on the floor trying to write these lyrics <laughs> i've read that before he smacked his head he couldn't get it he couldn't get the lyrics and then you hear the lyrics it's like oh my god how Okay. All right. Oh, come all right. Out. So this is like remember this is all new to me, so perfect. 
All right. Hallelujah. The original version by Leonard Cohen. Three, two, one, boom. Now I've heard there was a secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord. But you don't really care for music, do you? It goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall, the major lift, the battle king composing. piece of songwriting you know obviously but can you you know that it starts off he has a secret chord yes. you know and it rises yeah. on the third and the third and the fifth and, and it's just you know just i love it and and it also can you imagine putting your heart and soul 
you might ever have that song once in your life, a song, obviously he doesn't, he can write those or whatever, but, uh, and then it gets ignored, a song like that. Yeah, I, and, and like, I've never heard that version. But I've heard a version of it. I can't remember whose version it is. Maybe it's maybe it's the Jeff Buckley. Maybe it's it's another. You know, but uh, I, I, you know, it, obviously, I I always thought it was maybe a traditional hymn or something. You know, and 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 because I'd never listened to the lyrics, I'd never really paid attention in that way. And, and he does demand that you listen to your his lyrics. Yes, I think I would demand yeah. maybe a strong word. No, you, no, no. You you're absolutely right. That, he, that's when Cohen. That's when that's when Cohen comes alive. Otherwise, he is his dirge in the background. And yeah. then you sit down and you have got that moment. And if you open yourself and you're at that moment and you really want to listen, no one fills your soul better than Leonard Cohen. Just like you know, it it it, it, it as we said at the very beginning, it's, it's poetry. You know, yeah. it, it it paints pictures that are personal to you based on your experience and your moments and and. Um, even though it's based around some of his moments. I mean, the, the the line in it, I can't remember the line exactly, about being tied to a chair in a hotel room or something like that. You know, would love to know what that was about and, and understand more, you know, uh, and, and you know, the words hallelujah coming through your lips. But, um, I, I, yeah, it was brilliant. Uh, just yeah, It's absolutely fantastic. And, and you know, so then he struggled. He struggled with mental, uh, with depression, um, and he struggled with the boots as well. And and then he went and say after after this period after that he was touring so much he he went into the monastery and you know he 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 became a Buddhist monk and he gave he gave everything away and I've seen interviews with him uh, uh, as a monk uh, it's he's phenomenal because imagine his soul that he has obviously he wears his heart on his sleeve he sings about it there's nothing hidden he's full of emotion and then to become a monk and try and find some solace as well. Um, uh, he, he, but he, in the end, he left that. He started drinking heavily in the monastery with his Zen master. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> but now, now can you, is there a difference in his songs pre and post monastery? Was he a Buddhist to start with, or was that something that came later to him in life? Came later, came later. Right. And I think it was to find some some calmness, calmness from his de, uh, depressions as well. Um, he, he he flirted. Obviously, he's a very spiritual person. He flirted. I don't know enough about it. There was, I mean, you've got, you've got definite eras of him. Hedra was one, and that's with, you know, uh, Marianne and, and whatever. And then... And then you have this later period, and, and and then he went, you know, with uh, first we take Manhattan and stuff like that, and, and this period. Then he went into the monastery. Then he came back out. Okay. So he he very much on par with your, with Cat Stevens, actually, huh? Okay, yeah, because he went off. That you know, he he he, you know, became Yusuf and all those things, and and sort of now reappeared to do some tracks and things like that. You know, so interesting. <laughs> Pressures of touring, and also, as I said, he even to the day he died, he felt like a failed writer. the The musician part was not what he was after. Right, right, right. That was just uh, a canvas for some, you know, for his lyrics. But he, he, he felt like, you know, it doesn't matter what he did. He felt like a failure. He, he was a writer that hadn't written the huge work. He had written. He's done poetry. He's done books and whatever, and they're great, absolutely fantastic. But. Um, he he he's more famous for the thing he wasn't impressed about. Right, he? right. Which is hey, good for him. Yeah. So anyway, this uh, the song wasn't picked up. Um, it was picked up by Jeff, well John Cale, obviously yeah. from uh, you know uh, Velvet Underground. Um, and then it was Jeff Buckley. And I'll read the notes. Should I? So in uh, sure, because I we're going to listen to this straight after. Okay. In 2004, Jeff Buckley's version was ranked number 259 on the Rolling Stone 500 Greatest Songs of All Time. That's pretty cool. The same year, uh, Time called Jeff Buckley's version exquisitely sung, observing Cohen mumbled the original like a dirge, but Buckley treated the song like a tiny capsule of humanity using his voice to careen between glory and sadness beauty and pain it's one of the great songs in 2007 a poll of 50 songwriters conducted the magazine q listed hallelujah among the all-time top 10 greatest tracks with john Lennon legend calling buckley's version as near perfect as you can get wow okay and as i said it's now been covered that song that was ignored um, has now been covered by over 300 artists worldwide. Wow. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> so let's do this. Let's do this. Let's get the Buckley version because I'm really looking forward to this. So it'll okay. be a really nice counterpoint because, you know, uh, the thing about Cohen is 
you, you know, he's got his style, but you always would love it to, you know, he's the greatest songwriter there is. Let's see what someone who's got an amazing voice could do. Even though I'm not discounting his voice, but I think, you know, Jeff. Different Buckley. deliveries. I mean, yeah. just before we move on, like, again, that the the production on on that track was spectacular. You know, again, with that sort of touch of the backing vocalist, the, the, yeah. the sort of, you know, it, it but, in, but you can absolutely pull the lyrics out of it perfectly. So anyway, but, so let's see what the, Jeff Buckley does. All right, this is Jeff Buckley, Hallelujah. Official video, probably we're going to get officially blocked. Three, yes, two, right. one, boom. <laughs> strong but you needed proof you saw her bathing on the roof her beauty in the moonlight overthrew you she tied you to a kitchen chair she broke your throat and she cut your hair and from your lips she drew Baby, 
Maybe there is a God above But all I've ever learned from love Was how to shoot somebody who I drew, yeah It's not a cry that you hear at night It's not somebody who's seen the light It's a call and it's a broken hallelujah That sounded magnificent. Just like that was absolutely heartbreaking. Again, I I think second time listening through the lyrics as well helps for me. You know, there was a a lyric I heard in there. The only thing I've learned about love is when someone outdrew you. You know, and it's <laughs> yeah. like you know, yeah. The lyrics second time round as well, and um, just, but it <clears throat> validates Cohen songwriting. I, I, you know, from what you had read from the notes before, I was expecting something. You know, the saying about maybe a bit more upbeat or something. In some regards, it was even harder. I think it was even e- like just the recording of it was, and and, and Jeff Buckley's voice, where. Again, we keep listening with headphones, and and so you really can hear every breath, and you can feel every. And for me, I like I'm really triggered a lot by audio sound, by the sound of something, and by, you know, the sort of the dynamics of a, a piece. And uh, that was amazing. It was so fragile, yes. so fragile. And you're absolutely right. You could hear every. I mean, when you're holding that note at the end, and you, yeah. you're waiting for the. The breath in, yeah, you know, and yeah. he, but what an exquisite voice, and he, and he, he, you know, he, he played that so well. He took it to another, even he took it to an even better place than where Cohen left it. Yeah, it was, it was amazing. It was phenomenal. It was just unbelievable. I mean, like very emotional, but just brilliant. But it just shows less is more. You know, you don't have to be full throttle volume to eleven. You know, uh, like, you know. Yes, but if just, you've got a song, song written, I um, mean, we always say that, you know, the music backdrop, or I was saying the music is just a backdrop for his lyrics. And again, um, <clears throat> it doesn't have to be 11 because, I mean, he just, you know, the lyrics were just so phenomenal. Yeah. Oh, perfect. That was Alternate really good. Secret quarters. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Go, go up and pick up your guitar and have a quick go. Yeah. I'm not taking on Jeff. No. <laughs> yeah. That song's dumb. You know. That was. <laughs> I loved it. I loved it. It's been such a treat, such a treat having them both next to each other. It, the the songwriter and the 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 just fragile um, uh, savant singer, you know. Yeah, yeah, no, but brilliant. That was like definitely a bonus there, big bonus. I would suggest. So, yes. yeah. oh, good. So, so, so that was that was day four, was it? So we got more. God Almighty! I'm just having a quick look. Yes. There's more. There's more. If 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 the governor lets it through, of course. Yeah, the YouTube governor. She's a mean. She's a mean lady. And she he, comes he, out quite he, she, right. Them. He, she, them. They, they, and them. Because, <laughs> they, they. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well. Well, um, well. If you do want to see more, please like and subscribe. Yes. We'll still do it anyway. But just make us feel better. 
We've also got coming up Canada Week, a curated week on now. We've got <laughs> well, Aussie, this is Canada Week, maybe. If 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 we've got Aussie Week four, um, we've got Chisel Week. Chisel. Yep. We've got Rush Week being done. Are we really? Yeah, yep, that's been done by a uh, patron. Of ours. <laughs> well, that's Canada um, Week as well. What the I hell? Know. We've also got Kate Bush Week um, two. Coming no, up. really. Sean, Sean pulled that together. So the idea is, people, if you want to put a week together, please do, because uh, you know we go into these artists and we know nothing, and we we just come away just just completely mind open. You know, <coughs> it's fascinating. All right, I, I, I think it's a bit too much love for Canada. No. I mean, I, come on, <laughs> our, our northern brethren. I mean, you know, after they gave us such a hard time, after we, you know, we didn't do enough rush tracks, we now give them a rush week, that was a one Cohen person. week. That was, and... one, that was one person who didn't who didn't give us enough. <laughs> and you know who you are. <laughs> you gave us a really hard time. I'm going to actually donate that whole week to you. <laughs> right. Well, they're, they're probably not following us anymore because... Nah. No, because they got banned. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, let's not glow on that. See you on the flip side. See you on the flip side. <laughs>